Hello, everyone. And uh, it is such a great pleasure to be standing here with uh, sharing stories with everyone. And I would love to give my thanks, special thanks, to my lecturers, to my family, especially my mom, and a special thanks to all of my supportive friends who are coming today. And this is my journey of resilience. So let's all take all of us back from five to six years ago. From just five to six years ago, I was struggling with being bullied because I was so fat. These hateful comments, these laughter, they stuck with me years after years. And I always thought of myself, am I a failure? Am I that ugly? And it affected my self-esteem. It affected my future. It affected my relationship. And at that time, I even find that it's quite hard to find a girlfriend because most of the girl that I encountered with, most of them, they would say like, ew, you're so ugly. Mm, you're so fat, I don't like you at all. Those are the comments that I got years ago. And then I realized something snapped. No one is going to love you. There's only one person who is willing to do that. It's yourself. You have to be the person who loves yourself. And then I soon realized that only in helping myself do I truly find my inner strength? Us humans have endured many things in our life. And one of them, firstly, is acknowledging and embracing. Now let's take all of us back from two years ago. So in a traffic accident, two years ago, I got into a traffic accident. It was quite scary. My arm paid the price. It was completely broken into three different pieces. And the thing was, the physical pain was unbearable. But the emotional one is even harder. It hits you like a truck. At that time, I felt hopeless. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't reach anything. I couldn't live anything. I cannot help my parents at all. And I felt like a burden to society a burden to all my, my own family. It's not the difficult part. The difficult thing is the questionings. My friends keep asking me, hey, Dan, what's, what happened to your arm? Why is there a long scar over there? And I kept running away from it. I kept avoiding it. It's like imagining holding a stone in your hand. The first seconds, the first minute, the first hour, the stone feels pretty light. But the longer you hold it, it gets heavier and heavier. Just like all the burden that I took on my own scar. It weighed me down even more, making me feel more depressed. And I have to find a way to free myself. I have to find a way to drop the stone away. And that is how I cope with my own insecurities, by acknowledging the existence of the scar itself, and by letting it go. This is just one of my transformation story. Not only that, I have to travel far and far into my years, just like grieving and processing. And this is a true story that happened last year. Grief and process. So what are grief and process? Just last year, this is a story about an empty chair. So this empty chair I have in uh, my living room, it's my grandmother's favorite. She always did things with the chair, eating with the chair, sleeps in the chair. She, she did everything in the chair. And the thing was, after she passed away for just last year, I couldn't bear to move the chair. I couldn't even look at it. Because every time I look at her chair, all of the memories just flushing back. I remember her smile, her presence, her cooking. I just love her cooking a lot. And at the first month, it was grief, I thought, was so hard to face. But 
days after days, months after months, I figured then I let myself to sit in the chair, to endure all of the emotion and endure all of the memories because emotions and memories are what makes us humans, humans. I allow myself to sink in the pain, to let it teach us, to let it teach me to welcome its lesson. So I would love everyone to embrace your empty chair, to realize grieving isn't about moving on. Grieving is about moving through. It's about sitting with the pain and understanding the lesson. So I embrace your chair. Most of the story I'm about to show you here, to share with you today, are mostly on true stories, but there is one particular story that intrigued me most. It's one of my friend's story. So if you look at here, this is a mirror. And the story I'm going to tell you today is the girl with the mirror. So this is based on a true story. I have a friend. Her name is Elena, and she's uh, very beautiful. She has a lovely smile, and her laugh is so contagious. Every time she laughs or walks in the room, everything was just lit up. That's the amazing part about her. And she had this boyfriend. His name is Daniel, and they've been together for three years. And Daniel was like the world to her. And one day, her world shattered. Daniel got caught cheating and being unfaithful to her. So what did she do? She got frustrated. She got clouded by her own judgments. She couldn't think right. So one day, she aimlessly walking around the room, just walking around her old room, and she, she found her old mirror, a mirror that she hasn't looked inside for such a long time. And once she looked inside the mirror, she couldn't even recognize herself anymore. It was like a different person because her boyfriend, she showered him with love, with time, passion, and dreaming of a future together. She ignores all of her needs. That's why she couldn't even recognize herself. Her once bright eyes were now dull. Her perfect posture are now slouched, and things are not looking good for her. So she figured she needed to do something, and with that mirror that helped her, she vowed to change. She vowed to make changes now. She vowed to ask herself, what should I do tomorrow? What should I do to become better? What do I need in life? What do I want? What is my dream? Self-reflection isn't about looking on your mistakes. Self-reflection is about looking for things you need to improve, looking for things to embed your life, to become a better person. Just like her, I did my self-reflection as well, but it was not that as good. But my way, my things are different from her. What I did was, back in last year, as I told you before, my arm was broken, so I hit rock bottom and figured what? I couldn't do anything. I was physically and mentally incapable, and I was trapping my own mind and body. I was imprisoning myself. And one day, my best friend came to me hey, and asked me, Hey, Dan, you want to play football? Then I answered him, what do you mean? I got a broken arm. How am I supposed to play football? His answer was astonishing. You broke your arm, but your leg is OK. So play football. Then guess what? I joined him, and I played football. For years, I started playing. It became better and better every day. The motion of just kicking the ball, of running around the course is so great because movement reminds us that we are humans, we are alive, and we are capable of change. And that what's happened in years and years ago, just like the father of medicine, Hippocrates once said, walking is man's best medicine. Peribadismatos aristeiatriki, 
that those are his words. So I would love to ask, are there anyone who loves walking in this room? All right, that's very good. I love walking as well. Have you ever wondered what just a short walk can really ease the mind? Or dancing to your favorite song can lift your spirit? Movement, the beautiful of movement, it's, it meets you where you are. It helps you release stress, just like when you feel stuck, move. When you feel overwhelmed, move. That's the beauty of movement. So ladies and gentlemen, as we stand here at the crossroads of challenges and growth, let us remember, recovery is not a destination. Recovery is a journey. Some step forward, some step back. But those steps shape the people who we are today. And those steps matter. Just like my arm. My arm once a symbol of shame, but I found strength once I saw weakness. Or a leaner story to self-reflect on yourself if you want to improve to look for things to become a better person, or just simply move more, be a more proactive person, be a better person by walking, going to the gym, play with your friends. Those are the essential things that help us, that help me, that help myself to conquer all the challenges. And so everyone, I would love to re remind you that rise with grace, set your own pace, and watch yourself win the race. Thank you.